we're talking about youth, right? Leo? Yes, we are. Okay, so there's this tweet um, from Cam's, at Cam's Resources. It says, youth should rather be encouraged on other content like food, health, technology. Mm. I feel everyone is on news. I think he's still, he tied it to our last conversation. Social media. On social media. Mm -hmm. But now, since we are talking youth, I thought it would be good to bring there to encourage the youth to focus on food, health, technology. Okay. Now, the United Nations is dedicated to addressing the needs and rights of young people by bringing the work of the United Nations closer to them. According to the UN, the success of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainability Sustainable development depends on empowering young people as rights holders, agents of change, and torchbearers. The UN Secretary General's envoy on youth, hmm. Jamathma Wikramanayaki, has also played a key role in transforming the youth development sector at the national level, notably through the creation of a large movement for civic and political engagement of young people named Hashtag Generation. It's my pleasure to welcome the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, who is joining us from our studio in Abuja. Jamathma Wikrama... Wikramanayaki. Thank you. That's right. She's smiling, is she? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I got it the first time, yeah. but I couldn't quite do it twice. Do forgive me. Morning and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, you for having me. Yes, you are the Secretary General's envoy on youth. Now, what exactly do you do? Yes, um, so I was appointed as the United Nations Secretary General's envoy on youth uh, in July last year. Uh, my role is to really bring young people closer to the United Nations and to bring the United Nations closer to young people. Um, a large part of my work goes into mainstream youth concerns, youth ideas, into the work of the United Nations, especially into discussions on peace and security, development, human rights and humanitarian affairs. So in my role, I also take um, country missions where I go to countries, different regions of the world to meet with young people where they are and listen to their voices and take them back with me to the United Nations and also to make them aware and informed of the relevant uh, United Nations instruments on young people so that they can hold their governments accountable. You seem to be in the right place because Nigeria has a huge youth population. Now, you say you bring the UN close to the youth and you bring the youth close to the United Nations. Um, how exactly do you do this? What kind of um, rapport have you had with young people since you've been in Nigeria? Maybe I should ask you, first of all, how long have you been here? Uh, this is my third day. In, oh. in Nigeria, I've been having a really good time ever since I got to Abuja. Um, I met with um, about 200, 250 young people on the evening of the first day that I got here, uh, where we gathered and I had a town hall discussion with uh, young leaders, uh, young civil society leaders, uh, to really have a discussion on what issues that young people in Nigeria are facing, but most importantly, what solutions that they bring to the table. Okay, what would you say has been your, ex what, how would you describe your experience with the youth? Well, uh, we've had our discussion on, on many issues, starting from education, uh, especially access to education, the need of education being not just um, of quantity when we say access to education, but also in terms of quality, uh, a special attention to the girl child, um, how we should uh, protect the rights of girls and young women, especially of the girl child, to prevent them from female genital mutilation, child marriages, and to give them necessary 
information about their bodies. We've also had a substantive discussion about the huge unemployment issue that is not only limited to Nigeria but across the world right now and different measures that the government and young people themselves as entrepreneurs can take to solve this issue. We've also speak a little bit about um, a migration and, and related issues. Um, so we've also had a quite a number of discussions on what solutions that young people can bring to these issues. And I've met with government representatives like the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Youth Affairs, um, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry for Women Affairs and Social Development to really see how I can bridge those solutions young people bring into the policy makers. Are there any issues um, arising from your rapport with these young people are there any issues you find that are peculiar to Nigerian youth? Well, I have to say that um, almost all the concerns that I hear from uh, people in Nigeria are very common to the global. They resonate with the global concerns of young people. For an example, I heard that in Nigeria, uh, about 6 million young people are unemployed. Globally, there's about 71 million young people who are unemployed. Um, the issue of uh, the skills mismatch in the skills of young people and the skills required by the global market, the access to education, um, access to information regarding sexual and reproductive health. These have actually been the same issues that I've been hearing from all the other part of the world. For the last six months in my position, I've got the opportunity to meet young people in almost actually in all the continents and these are the same issues that are resonated. But I think what's important here is even though the issues that we face are global, the solutions can really be local. I think that's where we should be focusing on. Would you say the issues you've had to deal with or encountered amongst the youth, uh, they, they sound quite enormous can, and almost overwhelming. How best would they all be tackled and how are you going to ensure that these are looked at? How would you prioritize? No, definitely. I think the only way that we can solve these issues is to make the right investments in the right times. Right. Um, so we talk about a large population of young people. Nigeria in a few years is going to be the third most populous country in the world. That is also with about 70 percent of the population being young. So there comes a time that we have a large number of young people in our countries and we have to really see how we can turn their energy, their dynamism in, as to a positive source that contributes to the development of the country larger than to the region and to the world. So how do we make those investments in the right time? How do we invest in education so that everyone gets quality education? How do we give right skills to young people so that they can contribute in their fullest potential to the labor market? Um, how do we invest especially? How do we make uh, right investments in the girl child to make sure that we don't leave 50% of our population behind. So I think the key really is to invest in education, invest in health care, invest in building the capacities of young people because that will only reward in positive outcomes in the future. But you see, you're, what you're saying here would sound like um, rhetoric to a lot of people who, especially on the African continent, who say they've heard this from the politicians, maybe heard a little of it from the UN. In terms of like practicality, can we do a, a, a more like step-by-step -step flow? How would it go? See, there's, there's no correct, like this is step one, this is step two, this is step three process uh, to achieve that, right? Youth development must be holistic. So you can't really expect um, the Ministry of Youth Affairs to be carrying all this burden and to, to be trying to do everything for young people. So the key is really how the policymakers, how Ministry of Youth Affairs, Ministry of Employment, Ministry of Education, Ministry of em en Environment, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Defense comes together to really evaluate what they're already doing for young people 
but also what they are already doing with young people, how young people participate in our political processes, how do we gather inputs from young people before we formulate our input uh, policies, how do we partner with young people, youth organizations, civil society youth organizations when we are implementing our policies, when we review our policies, to what extent do we give a voice to young people to really voice out their concerns regarding the implementation of the policies we have. So I think it's it's really widespread, but the key is really to not just work for young people, but also work with young people. Okay. Now, since your appointment, you've, um, you've had to travel around the world. You've met with some government officials. Would you say your experience with the politicians and those in the, in the corridors of power uh, is such that you're encouraged that they will take the development of the youth holistically, as you say it should be? Well, to be honest with you, with every president that I've spoken to, with every prime minister that I've spoken to, every minister that I've spoken to, spoken to, um, everybody understands that investment should go into young people, youth development, young people, energy, innovation. These have become really buzzwords, right? You can see when you're near an election, how politicians also use these terms to really get their um, votes. Um, but when it comes to putting money where the mouth is, to really financing education, really financing healthcare systems, financing youth entrepreneurship, then most of them are silent. So I think there's this understanding that youth have a lot of power when it comes to decisions in the country, but nearly not having that political will to make those investments, to take those risks, is what is lagging behind, as I see.